helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Certified Christian Counselor and Director of Ottawa's Elam Counseling Services. Hi, I'm Melissa Waggett, and I'm the co-host of Life Transformation Radio Show, where we talk about uh, counseling issues from a Christian perspective with our host, Michael Hart, who's the director of Elam Counseling Ministries here in Ottawa. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Elam Counseling Ministries, this is a a professional counseling service that offers services to a variety of clients from a Christian perspective. And what's really great with this service is there's really a ministry focus behind it. And there's the attempt to offer counseling services to everyone, no matter their income level and their need. And the way we can do this is often through donations from people like yourselves. And we've recently been afforded nonprofit status, which is allowing us to um, continue to accept donations and provide people with the receipts that they require. So we really appreciate those donations. And it really helps this ministry meet the needs of people in the community who otherwise may not be able to afford counseling services. Um, if you're trying to find more information about Elam, there's a few ways you can get a hold of us. One is through our website, elamcounselingministries.com. You can also link to our website through the CHRI webpage. We're also very active on social media through Twitter and Facebook. And if you prefer, you can always reach out to us by phone, whether it's about this radio show or Elam Counseling Ministries and how you can get some help you may need at 613 699 one six seven seven and with me in studio today as i said off the top is michael hart the director of elam counseling ministries and we're doing the second part of our radio show about overcoming sleeplessness or insomnia welcome michael thanks for joining us again thank you very much melissa for that lovely introduction and as usual it's a it's a pleasure for us to be uh, talking about another important uh, aspect of, of of mental health which is the ability to be able to sleep and the problem of insomnia which is very common to a lot of people at the last show we touched on uh, the fact that sometimes insomnia can be caused by uh, circumstances that have entered a person's life and we read at the beginning of last show and I'd like to read it again it's Psalm 77 that that reads in verse 2 it says in the day of my trouble I sought the Lord My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. So here we have a reference to insomnia in verse 4, the last verse that I read, where the psalmist is saying, God, you're keeping my eyes open. You're, you're holding my eyelids open <laughs> that I cannot sleep. So it's as if this person is painting a picture. He's wrestling with God. He's trying to close his eyes to sleep. And he's saying, God, you're keeping my eyes open mm-hmm. so that I cannot sleep. So you may be listening to this show today and you're saying, that's me. I remembered uh, uh, today we tweeted uh, a, a, a we, we, we tweeted about the show uh, on sleeplessness and someone tweeted back right away to us saying, that's me. I am, mm-hmm. That's w- exactly what I'm going through. So it, it's, it, there's a lot of people out there who battle sleeplessness. And I think a show like this is, is very good because it is given very practical tips. And in the first part of the show, if you missed it, then please go to our website and click on, on the, the first episode of this show on, on insomnia because there are very helpful uh, details there. In the first show, we covered a number of, we covered uh, a few causes or categories into which sleeplessness could be covered. We said the first category was poor sleep caused by lifestyle. We looked, at, we won't go back into it today, but we, we, we covered what the lifestyle choices were that led to sleeplessness. And we looked at also solutions. We also said that the second category was poor sleep caused by cognitive disturbance. And we looked at examples of cognitive dis- distortions that cause sleeplessness, and we also looked at solutions. And we also looked at the third factor, the third cause of sleeplessness, which is psychological 
problems uh, such as depression, anxiety, wor and worry. So we, we covered those three categories. And I, I, last time we started the fourth category, which was poor sleep caused by nocturnal habits. And Melissa, last time you and I talked about some of those habits. Yeah, and it's those things that I think many of us, myself included, are guilty of. And it could be that cell phone at the side of your bed that buzzes, or you talked about even watching that action movie right before bed under the covers. And, and it... And you watch those things or you have that phone that buzzes at two in the morning that you mm -hmm, just got to reach mm -hmm, for. Mm -hmm. And I think even if you were the best sleeper in the world, <laughs> you'd have a struggle to go and wind down after those things. Absolutely. Or, and, and we do it all the time. We do it all the time. And another another uh, uh, habit as well is couples who decide to have these serious conversation in bed <laughs> yeah, so just before bedtime. And we've had sh shows about that as well. Yeah. Like, let's talk about the most serious issue yes, in our yes, relationship yes. let us talk about going into bankruptcy and yeah. how we are going to declare bankruptcy yeah, five and to ten. how troubled we are like just as we are trying to go to sleep i think that that makes for uh sleeplessness because it starts a, a quarrel yeah. and then both partners are so wound up emotionally that neither is able to sleep and they're going to bed angry at each other which <laughs> you know, yes. which is not conducive to I'm health just, and I'm sleep either. I'm just picturing both people back to back <laughs> with their eyes open, staring at the wall Absolutely. for the rest of the night. Yes. And I think the other thing you brought up too, which again, I think probably many people out there will identify with, is those people that you fill your evening up to the moment you go to bed mm -hmm. and you don't account give yourself any time to wind down. Mm -hmm. And so you may get home from work or whatever you do, make dinner, get the kids ready, do the laundry, clean the kitchen. And you're going, 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 put your pajamas on in bed and you expect to fall asleep. Mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. said there's some issues with that too. Absolutely, because if you if you work right up until bedtime, then you, you have been active for, for so long that your 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 uh, hormones are flowing, endorphins are flowing because you have been physically active and it makes you it puts you on this kind of uh, uh, very alert mode so that you're you're not preparing your body for sleep so so a good way to to counteract that is to start having a relaxation time if your bedtime is at 10 stop working at 8 30 just shut it down sit down have a cup of of tea and read a relaxing book or just sit and relax and and uh, start preparing yourself so the, it's very important if you fall into this category where you realize that you have habits that are nocturnal habits that are not conducive to sleep that you break those patterns you develop a new pattern because what I find with a lot of the clients that come in who have been plagued with sleeplessness for years once we have identified the category that it fall into and if it falls into this fourth category of of of, uh, uh, of poor sleep caused by nocturnal habits. Once we begin to change those habits, it's miraculous how some of these people who thought that they needed medication and were some of which were who were on medication uh, suddenly realized that they can sleep sleep very easily just by changing mm -hmm. their nighttime routine. And I think what's really interesting with this category is even in the name itself, where you say it's a habit. Mm -hmm. That sometimes you get in those habits that you don't even know you're doing it anymore because it's just normal. Mm -hmm. You do it every day mm -hmm. and you've done it every day for years and years. So being able to take that step back and identify it or have someone guide you to that absolutely it's and, really important and i think when it comes to solution we kind of touched on some of the solution about changing some of those habits but i'd like to go a, a little bit more deeply into that today because the, dr bootsin uh came up with a technique that has been since called the bootsin technique that he have identified a number of steps that you can do if you fall into this category that can help you to, to sleep a lot better. And he, he, has, he identified six things that can be done to help you help you to, to sleep if you're struggling with sleeplessness and it's, it's caused by, by this category. The first thing that he says is that if, if you're struggling with sleeplessness, go to, to bed only when you are sleepy. So we talk about uh, winding down, sitting and relaxing. For people who work up until up until bedtime, they're, they're, they want to fall asleep at 11 and they, they go into bed 11.05 and then they're so wound up that they, they, they can't fall asleep and then that leads to anxiety because I've been lying here now for mm -hmm. half an hour and I still can't sleep. What Dr. Bodson says is that you, you go to bed only when you're sleepy. 
so you you sit you relax you wind down uh you watch something relaxing or you read a, a relaxing book and then you know a lot of times when when people are are not trying to fall asleep sleep comes easily mm -hmm. but it's when you're you know you know what it's that's I, i'm like. watching that clock and it's like a bomb <laughs> gonna go off where you just watch yes. Doo -doo, doo -doo, yes yes doo -doo. yes, yes. <laughs> and then you shut your eyes and you think you've fallen asleep uh -huh. and you look and it's only been five minutes absolutely nothing is more frustrating absolutely but we know the opposite of that where you're you 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 are sitting in this chair relaxing having a conversation with your spouse mm -hmm. and then suddenly you realize oh i'm sleeping and i didn't even realize i wasn't even trying mm -hmm. So, so what Dr. Botson is saying is that don't don't go to bed to try to fall asleep. Go in bed when you're asleep. That's the first step. The second thing that he says is that use your bed only for sleeping. Do not read, watch television, uh, surf the, the 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 internet, or play with any tablets in bed. Use the use the bedroom as a, as a place of a, a place for sleeping and, and take out those other kind of activities that are not conducive to sleeping out of the bedroom. Get rid of the TV or don't turn it on. Get rid of those tablets. Get the phone out because these instruments will only cause you not to be able to sleep. And and Dr. Uh, Botson goes on to say that the third step is that if you're unable to sleep, get up and move to another room. Stay up until you're really sleepy and then return to bed. And then if sleep does not come, get up again out of the bed, go into another room and then go back into bed. And he explains it that uh, by doing this, you're breaking a psychological, uh, a psychological uh, programming that can develop in your mind where you're now associating your bedroom with sleeplessness. If you're lying mm. there in bed night after night and you're trying to sleep, then there's a connection that has been made in your, in your brain where you think of your bed, you think of the bedroom and all you think of is frustration and the inability to sleep so what he's trying to do by getting you to get up if you can sleep is to break that pattern where where your bed is associated with sleeplessness and it's very powerful because a, a lot of time by getting people to do this they finally realize wow i can go in my bed and now uh it it, it makes me able i'm able to sleep so don't lie in bed and frustrate yourself with oh i'm lying here and I, I'm staring at the clock and I can't sleep. Get up. Take the association of sleeplessness into some other room. Uh, link that with some other room. And then only when you're tired, uh, you come back to your bed. So get up, sit in a chair, relax. And at the point where you're falling asleep, then you go into mm -hmm. your bedroom. So the third step. The fourth step that, that he says is repeat step three as often as necessary throughout the night. So in other words, to break that psychological patterning or that conditioning, as, as it is called in, in psychological terms, it, it's necessary to, to keep repeating that mm -hmm. steps as often as possible. And I think what was key too in step three that you yeah. highlighted there is when you go to another room, you go there and you relax. This is not, okay, leave your bed and like watch the angry movie again or turn on the, <laughs> the tablet or let's answer. Or go like, for a run. Yeah, or answer 55 emails from mm -hmm, work. It's mm -hmm. stay in that calm, relaxed state. Just Absolutely. do your sleeplessness in yes, another room. Yes, yes. And I would say too, if you're sitting in another room, dim lights is very helpful. Don't have your lights turned on really bright. You know, keep that room dim and, and sit there until sleep comes. Or And then a lot of people realize when they do this, they fall asleep easily. Then you get up and you 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 go uh, to the other to to your bedroom. So this 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 step three is very important because it breaks that conditioning. So if you've just joined us, you're listening to the Life Transformation Show, uh, Elim Counseling Services broadcast. Elim is spelled E L I M counseling with two L's or website is elimcounselingministry.com if you have a question about sleeplessness or you'd like to, to, to get help for sleeplessness you can call us at 613-699-1677 we can also be contacted by, by email if you go to the contact section of our website you will find our email there that you can send us email with a question or you can also fill out our counseling uh, 
a counseling request form online if you need counseling for it's a confidential uh, form uh, that that comes directly to us and you can fill in your name the the purpose for which you're seeking help and we will get back to you an intake worker will get back to you and then we we will we will set up an appointment uh, with you from there so Melissa we've been we've been talking about uh, sleeplessness the different the different uh, Types or, or causes or categories into which sleeplessness falls, and you and I uh, have, have been talking about the 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 boots and technique that we, mm-hmm. have, we have discussed a number of steps, and I think we were on step four. That's right, and that was sort of repeat step three right. until right. as long as needed, right. as and many st- times as needed. Right, and step three, you said that don't stay in bed and try to fall asleep in bed. Get up out of bed, go to another room, uh, relax. Uh, until you you are sleepy and then return to bed. Now step five is is is, is also very very important and very interesting because step five of the boots and technique says uh, set the alarm and get up at the same time every morning no matter how little you slept during the night. And even on a Saturday? Even on a Saturday. This helps the body acquire a constant sleep-wake rhythm. So what is happening when you develop this, this way of, 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 of this pattern of sleeping at a certain time and waking up at a certain time, your body gets into what we call a carcadian rhythm where you, you know your body will automatically begin to feel sleepy at a certain time of the day and you'll, you'll begin to, to wake up at a certain time of the day and eventually after doing this, for a period of time you won't even need the clock to get up anymore your body will be in that rhythm where you sleep uh, you fall asleep at a particular time and you wake at a particular time it's very it's very interesting how the mind and the body can mm-hmm. be can be conditioned it's funny i see that i have a two-year-old at home and mm-hmm. he's we, we go through sleep wake cycles on varying degrees of success <laughs> but it's interesting for him he obviously doesn't function under alarm clock mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but for the most part he goes to the bed same time every night but every morning like clockwork mm-hmm. literally he'll be up at the exact same time he's Melissa, my alarm clock remind me of those days I'm glad I'm over those, oh, those gosh, days when my kids are older is... now but I remember when my son who was now who is now 21 mm-hmm. when, when he was about uh, 3 or 4 he would wake up at 4am in the morning and he would want to go outside and play he doesn't realize mm-hmm. that and he would do that every morning so I became conditioned to yeah. getting up at 4 Exactly. And, <laughs> and, and you can see, though, how their circadian rhythm kicks in. Absolutely. And hopefully yours as a parent catches up, too, so you're not too sleep deprived. Absolutely. So it, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult when you have younger kids, but it, as much as possible, if you need to take turns with your partner, if you're the one struggling with sleepness, it's important to get into a rhythm. And then the sixth thing that uh, Dr. Butzin talks about is do not nap during the day, because when, when you nap during the day, you it, 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 it makes makes you uh, very, very rested and unable to to sleep at night. So if you're having difficulty falling asleep and you realize, yes, I do take a nap every day at this particular time or I nap every day at different times, it's very important for you to break that cycle and stop napping. So these six things, I think if you have missed the first few, you can go back to our, our, the podcast on our website after this show is ended and and look at those things. Mm-hmm. So we have covered four of the four of the six things uh, so far, and then the the, the fifth of, of the six things uh, has to do with poor sleep caused by medical condition or medication or or a medic a physical condition or medication. So uh, there there sometimes a person might have an injury where there, there's back pain, for example, and so you lie and there is, there is pain and you're not able to sleep, or you're on medication. Some medications have been known to, to contain uh, substances that, that, that are not conducive to sleep. So if you, if you think that you, you're having difficulty sleeping because of a medical condition and injury or because of the medication that you're on, the, on, then the solution for that is to make sure that you you have a, a conversation with your with your 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 family doctor 
to say, I have this injury at night, I can't sleep because I am in pain. So the, the treatment for that is more medical than psychological. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's always a good discussion too when you're getting prescribed maybe a new medication from mm-hmm. your physician or nurse practitioner, whomever, right. saying what are the side effects of this medication. So if Absolutely. you experience them, Absolutely. you can go back and have that conversation. Absolutely. So you can see how important it is to, to know what category you fall into because if you, if you go to a counselor uh, who is not trained or skilled to be able to diagnose uh, which category and you just go and say, well, I am having, uh, a, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to sleep at night. And then this person starts telling you that you need to exercise or you need to come off caffeine when in truth and in fact, it has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with the fact that it's a medical condition. It's because of the medication that you're on. That makes all the difference mm-hmm. in the world because it's like if, if, if you're not trained in this area of helping in sleeplessness, then you can be get, it's like giving a person the wrong prescription, uh, a, a prescription for diabetes when in fact they have high blood pressure. Yeah, exactly. You're not treating that root you're cause. Not, you're not treating it properly. And so, and that's the other thing for us to stress too with the medical things is have the do- conversation with your doctor first. Mm-hmm. So if you think it may be a med, don't just stop taking your med. Talk to your doctor first and see if that really is the issue for you. Absolutely. So, so this is this is more of, of a medical medical solution. So, most of the, the the all of the other techniques that we have looked on so far, we have looked at at practical solution mm-hmm. things that can be done. But if in this case it's a medical condition, then uh, a physical condition such as pain or or medica- or uh, the fact that the person is on medication, it's important to speak with your your family doctor. And then we get to the the, the sixth and final category into which sleeplessness is. Is, is placed and it's it's uh, what we call primary insomnia. This is this is a very uh, important category because uh, if a person has primary, in, maybe I, sh- I should explain what primary insomnia mm-hmm. is first. Primary insomnia uh, is a category where a person has had a long-standing problem with insomnia that can be traced back to childhood. So it said that it is believed that this is caused by some chemical imbalance or problems with the nervous system. So if you have if you have primary insomnia and it it, it you have had this uh, from your child and you can remember being taken to doctors by your parents for primary insomnia, it. For insomnia, it's possible that you have you fall into this category that is called primary insomnia. Now, people who have primary insomnia also have uh, extreme sensitivity to things such as noise and stimulants. So you can see how it goes hand in hand. Because if you are extremely sensitive to noise, then you're going to have a difficult time sleeping at nights if you have if you can hear a car horn from 10 miles away Mm -hmm. because you're so sensitive to noise or if you're sensitive to stimulants you can imagine that having a cup of coffee in the morning yeah (laughs) it's going to linger or yesterday that right or or yesterday it's it's going to be affecting you more than it would affect your your normal your average person so if if you're listening to then you can say well i it's seem as if I am having, I fall into this category of primary in, insomnia. And this kind of, of sleep uh, of, of sleep disorder is, all, is, is also best treated by a physician, a doctor, where you probably have to go to your doctor, uh, talk about what you're experiencing and get medical help. Uh, what, what we find is that with medication, it, it uh, it, dealing with a specialist is also very helpful because some doctors who are not knowledgeable in that area may prescribe sleep medication. And I have clients who come to me who are on sleep medication and they're saying, I still can't sleep. Mm. I'm taking this medication and I still can't sleep. So it's a known fact by people who are trained in this area that people who have primary insomnia, that sleep medications do not work as well for those categories of people as it does for people who fall into other categories. However, what works 
works well for people who who have primary insomnia is mild dose of antidepressants. Like uh, some doctors, as clients who have come to me who are doc- who doctors who are knowledgeable in this area, have been given mild form of antidepressants for sleeplessness, and it works. It helps them to sleep a lot better. So it, it's important to know these kind of things so you can have this kind of conversation with your doctor to say, well, this is not working for me. The sleep medication is not working. And so antidepressants might be a better way to go for people who are struggling with primary insomnia. And so it's good you touch on medications there because that was going to be one of my questions for you as well is we've talked a lot about personal factors that can be changed by an individual, whether on their own or with the guidance of a counselor like Mm -hmm, yourself. mm -hmm. But there always comes into play in conversations about this, the the medication piece. Right. And are there situations where it's necessary? And how do you guide clients um, in making those choices? Absolutely. I think if to answer that question, we could probably go back to what I touched on in the first show when we talked about the different types or stages of insomnia. So it's important before medication gets into the picture that a person looks, uh, uh, number one, on what stage do I fall into? Am I into the transient stage where I have insomnia for one to three nights and then occasionally one to three nights and then after that I'm able to sleep. If you're falling into this category, then there is really no no great concern there or need for medication. If you're into short-term insomnia where there are four nights to, to three weeks, then it's possible to 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 do some kind of assessment to see what is the cause, where do you fall, is it a lifestyle uh, reason why you can't see because it is some injury that you have sustained where do you fall is it some kind of cognitive distortion that that you're having that is keeping you awake and then if you can identify that it's in that category there may be no need for medication as well however if you're into chronic uh, uh, if you're in the, in, into the third category which we call chronic uh, insomnia that is lasting for three weeks or more and we have you have done assessment with a trade uh, therapist in this year and it does not fall into 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 any of the categories that we have talked about categories such as cognitive distortion or lifestyle patterns and so forth or psychological reasons then it's very important for you to see uh, see a doctor and maybe be referred to a specialist so that you can see whether or whether or not there is something else going on there because sleep is very 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 important so we have come to the end of today's show but listen uh, for the sake of the listeners uh, I, I just want to, to to repeat very quickly the six categories that we talked about in the two episodes so the no, the first category are that sleeplessness falls into was poor sleep caused by lifestyle the second category was poor sleep caused by cognitive distortion the third category is poor sleep caused by psychological problems such as depression the fourth category was poor sleep caused by nocturnal habits the fifth was poor sleep caused by medication medical condition or, or medication and the sixth was uh, what we called primary insomnia and what we have done in these two episodes melissa was to look at very practical tools that people can use to to, to deal with their sleeplessness. We have also made suggestions as to when to seek medical help. So if you have missed out on the first part, it's on our website at elimcounselingministry.com. You can also give us a call at 613-699-1677. One of the things I didn't talk about was relaxation techniques. And I want to give away a, a to the first 10 callers a, a copy of a, a relaxation CD with, a, with an exercise that we use for relaxation call progressive relaxation technique which is very helpful so the first six people to call or to email me will be sent a copy of of this cd so we have come to the end of today's show thank you very much again for listening and until next time this is your host michael hart of elam counseling services and melissa waggett praying that god would bless you in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart 